Hi and welcome. I'm Ashley, the co-pastor here at Mark Church, where we are marched to mark others till all know Jesus. Thank you so much, no matter where you're watching from, for joining us today. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'm super excited about this message today. Let's jump. All right, have a seat. All right, are y'all y'all in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11? Let me tell you, this is the message you do not want to miss, okay? Um, I'm going to teach you some Bible hacks on how to mature in Christ. Look at your name and say, we're about to learn principles, okay? Um, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's look at verse 11. It says, when I was a child, this is Apostle Paul, I spoke like a child. Mm -hmm. I thought like a child. I even reasoned like a child. Sound like somebody, you know? But when I became a man, somebody say grown, grown. I gave up childish ways. Y'all, I remember, let me see if y'all grew up in the same type of house. I remember, I don't know about you. I remember wanting to get out of my mama's house so bad when I was a kid. I would say ignorant stuff like this. I would say, when I'm grown, I'm gonna stay out all night because I ain't got no curfew. I would say stuff like, when I'm grown, I'm gonna eat what I want. Anybody else ever say that? Like, I would say stuff like, when I'm grown and I get my own car, I'm gonna drive wherever I wanna drive. Here's the reality now that I'm grown. I hate staying out late because I love sleep. Sometimes I be ignoring y'all, not because I'm busy, because I just want to sleep. Now that I'm grown, I can't eat what I want to eat. You eat 14 boxes of donuts, you're going to be 400 pounds. Now that I got my own car, these gas prices are disrespectful. I don't want to drive. If taxis were popular, I would be in a taxi today. My mama would say one thing after I would say ignorant stuff like that, she would say, you'll see. Anybody else, mama, you said that? Like, you, you'll see yourself, because here's the reality. It ain't all it's cracked up to be. So somebody say, it ain't all it's cracked up to be. See, your, your parents told you not to date him. But you went out there anyway and started dating him and you got your heart broken. Oh, I'm coming down your street. You know why? Because it ain't all cracked up to what it's supposed to be. See, 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 they told you in vacation Bible school to hold yourself till marriage. Oh, it got real quiet. They said, wait, and then we did, we did the, you remember the purity ring thing? We did the purity ring, huh? No, y'all didn't do it. All right, I can take a tell. Okay. <laughs> they said, wait, but now you're dealing with somebody else's demons because you got soul ties. Because it ain't all it's cracked up to be. Oh, come on, somebody. They told you not to do that business deal, but you did that business deal anyway because you thought you was better than everybody and you knew everything there was to know about business. And now you got to start over because it ain't all it's cracked up to be all the time. Mm -hmm. When I became a man, Trey, I put away childish things. Let me say it this way. Paul was saying, since I have become mature, I have put away things that make me childish forever. So that's what I say, today, it's time to put away childish things away forever. Say, stop picking them up. No, I need to put the, the P on the P. Stop picking them up. Can you look at your friend, friend, one more time and say, friend, friend? I'm done with that. That's the title of my message, and that's your very first point. I need you to preach it like you know it. Tell somebody else, say, today, I'm done with that. 
See, you can keep arguing in that marriage all you want to, but today I'm done with that. You can keep playing the victim all you want to, but I'm done with that. You can stay in the streets and give your body away all you want to, but me, I'm done with that. You can argue with yourself, boo-boo. I'm done with that. You can drink yourself drunk by yourself, because I'm done with that. You can keep entertaining them spirits through the movies and that music, but I'm, I'm done with that. You can keep entertaining grace, but ignoring conviction, but I'm done with that. You can have it, but I'm done. Touch my say, you can have that, but I'm done. See, you don't understand. The reason why I say I'm done and the reason why you got to be done is because there's a God who is coming back soon. I don't know if you know him. His name is Jesus. He will return and the day is here where you got to start deciding whether the Bible is true or not. I'm done with childish things. Is there anybody else in this room that can say today I'm done with the childish stuff. You go be a child by yourself. Some of y'all got some knucklehead boyfriends. You need to go ahead and text them and tell them, I'm done with that. You can play them games if you want to, but I'm done with that. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done with that. This is your chance to get rid of that ratchet one in your life. They ain't even got to know what's going on. Just go ahead and text them. All caps, I'm done with that. <laughs> No, no, no. Don't even say we done. Y'all never were because <laughs> God didn't put it together. But you can go and text them and say, I'm done. It's not personal. You know the thing? It's not you, it's me. No, it really ain't them. It's you. I'm done with that. Some of y'all got some, oh, I was going to say it. Can I say it how I want to say it? Oh, can I say it how I feel it? Some of y'all got some baby daddies who's been man manipulating you, trying to hold the system against you. You need to text them and say, I'm done with that. God's going to expose every manipulative spirit that you've been trying to hold over my head, but I see right through it. I'm done with that. God gonna deal with you. <laughs> okay. I'm done. I'm, I, I'm done with that. You can entertain them spirits all you want to. And the fact that I've been entertaining you by trying to be unified with you. No, 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 boo-boo. I can't be unified with the devil. I can't be unified with the devil. I'm done with that. Okay. Paul, Paul says you, you got to be done with childish things and can I add one thing? You need to be done with people who re refuse to grow up. You see how the claps went down? You know why the claps went down? Because some of us are the childish ones. Uncle Rich, it's time to grow. Uncle Rich, I need you to say this with me. Stand up, Uncle Rich. Because this man loves one-on-one -on -one discipleship. Uncle Rich, look at the people and say, it's time, it's time. to grow up. To grow up. Oh, did you hear Uncle Rich? One more time, Uncle Rich. One more time. Tell him one more time. It's time. Yes, sir. Tap him on the, tap him. To grow up. Now, I need you to get somebody else to your left or to your right. Tap them on the shoulder and say, it's time to grow up. Oh, they didn't hear you. Tap your other friend, friend. Say, friend, friend. It's time to grow up. Okay, here it is. Touch yourself. Say, self. It's time. Oh. <laughs> Don't you look at nobody else without looking at yourself. Lay your hands on yourself and say, Chris, Chris, I got to talk to myself. Give me a minute. You call yourself out. Chris, 
It's time to grow up, boy. <laughs> okay. First Corinthians 13, verse 8. Paul says, here's some of the, here's some of the spiritual things you are immature in, in verse 8. He says, love never ends. As for prophecies, they pass away. As for tongues, they gonna cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. See, in this letter to the church of Corinth, Apostle Paul is speaking about love. He's emphasizing the importance over spiritual growth. He's saying some of us are practicing spiritual gifts, but we are still immature. You speak in tongues, you may even have words of knowledge, and you may even prophesy. This is going to upset the people who've been saved for a long time. I'm coming for you. You are coming for yourself. Spiritual gifts are worthless if you are using them but not growing and maturing in your faith and in love. It makes no sense to Honda Shonda Bonda but still be cussing and you five years old in the faith. It makes no sense for you to tie my bow tie. But you're still flicking people off every time somebody won't let you into the lane. I'm coming for you right now. Put your guns down. Da -da 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 -da. It, it makes no sense, Brooke. It makes no sense for you to be 10 years old in your faith. But you never pick up your Bible. Can I tell you? Oh, this is going to hurt. Uh oh. If you are a Christian, but you do not read your word and you've been living for years as a Christian, can I tell you the truth? You are not a Christian, you are religious. See, it's time to what? You are coming for yourself. I got to go a little bit further because this is the message where we grow up. Um, many of us, I'm going to include myself in this. No, I'm not. I'm going to include you in this, okay? Because I, I came out of this. I used to do this, okay? M m many of you uh, have gifts uh, of tongues. You, you can show baba, ko toto, show toto, ma toto, honda ronda. You, you, you can do it well. In fact, you can speak in tongues for 30 minutes, but you can't pray in your native tongue for three minutes. I, I got to go there. Let, let, let me help you. And, and, and here's why you can pray for 30 minutes in the spirit because you don't know what you're saying. But the moment you speak in your native tongue, you realize there's only but so much you can say because you lack content. See, when you have no word and relationship with him, your prayer time begins to expose what you and him really have. I'm preaching right now, but don't be offended because you told yourself it was time to grow up. I'm just giving you the words you need to hear to grow up, okay? Don't be offended. Don't leave. Don't leave. This is a good message for you. We're going to grow up. We, hey, hey, tell your neighbor, say, today we're coming, we're coming out of diapers. Uh, um, see, see, see. The reason why I say you may struggle to pray in your native tongue for three minutes is because content reveals context. Mama, Mama B went home a few months ago to be with the Lord, but one night she was in here praying on a Wednesday night. Whew, it was Holy Ghost. She, she stood right here and she was praying she had a Bible, but she never looked at it. It's like, it was like an armrest or something. She was like this. She had the mic. And I mean, she began to pray. Play that path for me. She, she began to pray 
And as she began to pray, the portals of heaven opened up on a Wednesday night in this room. I mean, she began to, y'all, she was praying. She, in the name of, she was saying every script. She was saying scriptures I'd never heard of. But you know what was happening? What was happening is her relationship with God was being exposed because she had put content in her life when nobody was looking. And so now that she had the mic, it wasn't about the mic, it was about the mic projecting the life she had been living. I believe that today we're about to read more, we're about to pray more than we've ever done before in the history of our lives. Here's why. Because we're growing up today. One more time, tell yourself, say self. self. Grow, up. Grow up. Can I remind you, this story is all about love. But can I remind you what kind of love? See, not phileo love. Phileo is a Greek word that simply means friendship, kindredness. It's a love that has conditions. The love that Apostle Paul is talking about growing up in is agape. Somebody say agape. You know what agape is. Agape is unconditional Love is it's selfless, it's not self-centered. It, it, no, it has no desire to look at itself. The best definition of agape love is this, for God so loved the world that he gave what? His only, that whosoever would not but have everlasting. Y'all know your Bible. Come on somebody, I love it. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Write them down. It says, he who does not love does not know God. That's, that's a whole mouthful. My God. For God is what? I just told you that love concerning God is unconditional, and it excludes self-centeredness. In other words, agape love is something you've got to become before you see him. You ain't got room to not forgive. Because forgiveness is the epitome of what God does when we don't deserve it. For God so loved the world. While we were yet sinners, Christ came and died so, so if you don't live a life of unconditional love, then you live a life of conditional love. And the relationships you have will only move at the level of love you're willing to graduate to. Three, three claps. You see that right there? But Pastor Chris, you don't know him. I don't care about knowing him. God knows him, and watch this, God knows you. God knows the you who you used to be before you got God. And, and, and don't be upset that he ain't with God the way he needs to be with God yet. All you need to do is love him unconditionally. Because when you can love him unconditionally, when you can love her unconditionally, then God can work through you. Is this offending you? No. Okay. In this entire letter, Mo's, 1 Corinthians 13, Paul encourages the church of Corinth to do one thing, not just grow up, but grow up by pursuing love. Can I say it how I feel it? Don't chase the feeling, chase the man. Love ain't a feeling. Married people say, hey. Married people don't leave me by myself. We don't always feel in love. But thank God that love ain't a feeling. Love ain't a sensation. Love ain't a mood. Love ain't a vibe. I got to go here. Ladies. <laughs> I 
Okay. Hey, I always look at Uncle Rich and Mama Diana before I say stuff because I'm like, they talk? okay, cool, yeah. All right. Hey, hey, ladies, it's not that he's like not a good man. It's that he's actually a really good man. You so used to dysfunction that you consider boring what is actually righteous. Like, like the fact that he don't hit you, the fact that he wants to wait on marriage, like the fact that he don't want to drink until we drunk, you find boring. But you put yourself in the same positions to date ratchetness and hoodness and whatever, is that a word? I made it up. If you keep dating ratchetness, you're going to keep getting the results of a ratchet person. But if you date righteousness, then you'll get the results of a righteous person. He don't want to go out. He don't want you to show your booty. Like, you ain't got to wear the tightest thing. Save some of that for the honeymoon. Like, he wants something that he can have for himself. Like, if everybody on Instagram can see it, if everybody on TikTok can see it, why in the world would he want it? I'm preaching. I told you to grow up. Men, stop showing your chest in the name of working out. Put your t-shirt on. If you don't want her to, if you don't want her to show her body, don't you show your body. Put your shirt on. I'm just working out. You ain't working out. You flexing. You showing yourself. And you're going to end up by yourself. I'm preaching. Hey, this girl over here, she rolled her eyes at me. Don't roll your eyes. Next time I'm going to pray they get stuck. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm stepping on every toe, every eyebrow, because it's time to grow up. We ain't going to hell for nobody. I ain't going to hell for nobody. I'm going to heaven, and if I got to deal with the stuff, I got to deal with the stuff. Tell somebody, say, don't chase the feeling. Chase the man. Let me clarify who's the man. His name is Jesus. Do you know him? I said, do you know him? His name is Jesus. Wonderful counselor. Prince of peace. Almighty God. Some call him Elohim. Some call him Adonai. Some call him the shepherd. Some call him the... Yeah. It's time to grow up. One thing I have observed watching my kids, Tish, is this. Growth isn't guaranteed. Growth is not guaranteed. My, my oldest is now nine, and my, my youngest twins, they're four, y'all. Y'all, we, we getting sleep now. My God. We sell sleep now. If you want to buy it, you can come and hit us up. It's a million dollars a bottle. I realized watching my kids that aging is the only thing guaranteed in life. But their growth has to be intentional. This is the part I need you to tighten your wig a little bit. I don't need you to leave the church. I'm about to go a little bit deeper in the word to help us grow up. Hey, shake your neighbor right now and say, wake up. Don't let, the, don't let the enemy make you fall asleep right here. Wait, 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 wake up. You should have had coffee. Growth requires God. Growth requires God. Our pursuit has to be daily, not sometimes. You don't pursue, listen. The day I stop pursuing Ashley, yep. if you got baby babies, hold their hold they ears. The day I stop pursuing Ashley, the bed will get dry. Because <laughs> you don't get that goodness without putting something in the bank account. 
I'm preaching. Men, I'm trying to help you out right now. Married men, if you want the goodness, you got to start in the morning time. You got to text her and say, I love you. You look good. You look beautiful. Have a great day. And then she leave the house. Five minutes later, I'm thinking about you. I miss you, girl. It's a pursuit that has to be every single day. Don't miss a day. The moment you miss days are the moments you miss intimacy with God. And there's nothing like intimacy with the Father who created you. See, I'm about, I'm about to come for you in just a second. Your life looks like what you are pursuing and what you're eating. The same way your body reflects what you eat, your life reflects what you pursue. You, you, you ever, anybody got kids in the room? Parents, raise your hand high. My God, may the Lord bless us. Because it seems like no matter how old they get, they still need your money. My God, hold on, sister. He'll do it for you. Lord, increase her. Lord, increase her now. Um, parents, you know this well. When, when the babies are like young, we have to take them uh, to doctor checkups, right? In, in the beginning, you have to go like often. You go so much that you're like, didn't we just go? We got to go again? And, and, and the older they get, the checkups become spaced out. But do you remember the season and the time when you, you would get the checkup and the doctor would look at the growth chart and, and he would look at the chart or she would look at the chart and, and if the chart, if they were way below the, the average, they would say, hey, we need to supplement their eating. And so they would say, keep breastfeeding, but we need to add some like, you know, something else in there, you know, like add a little bit of little cereal, a little milk or whatever, uh, oatmeal, whatever the case would be to, to make sure that their nutrients would go up. I'm preaching. They, they would say, add a little bit of word, add a little bit of prayer, add a little bit of fasting. Add <laughs> Add a little bit of consistency coming to the church. <laughs> Am I helping you? <laughs> Hand me that thing. See, this is this is this is what it is. See, when This is how it looks when you refuse to grow up. You, you get mad when somebody holds you accountable and tells you to stop texting him and you keep getting your heart broken and getting mad, but this is how you look when you don't grow up. Because my Bible says it's time to put away the elementary things and stop relaying the message of salvation. You've got to grow up. And if you don't grow up, you're going to look like a Christian with oversized diapers. Y'all laughing, but this is how we look to the world. You, you get a convicting message and you're like, I ain't coming to that church no more. Diapers. I, I, I ain't calling him no more because he don't, he don't get me. He didn't understand where I was coming from. He kept just trying to take me to the Bible. Diapers. What, what, you, don't need, you don't need wisdom. You need the word. I'm preaching. I got to make sure I smile while we grow up. Hey, get a, get a good one. Yes. <laughs> And here's the problem. Here's, here's the problem with us 
Here's a problem with us being grown, but still wearing diapers. The problem with this is diapers are only designed for those who aren't potty trained. Let me say it this way. Diapers are for those who haven't learned when it's time to put away waste. And when you don't learn to put away waste, you mess yourself. And then we, the church, got to come in here and wipe your butt. Oh, I'm coming for you today. It's, the days are over. When you go to God and you say, God, can you... Can you... I mean, some of y'all running. I'm preaching. I am. See, I expect my one-year-old to still be in these things. But I've been training her to come out of them diapers. And see, by the time they were four, I got annoyed. Parents, come on. It goes from, it goes from, oh, you're so cute, little boy. Let's whoop your booty. And you clean them up, throw it away. And the reality is, is there's a season as a parent when I should have to deal with smelling your crap. But there's another season when I shouldn't have to smell you no more. Because you should be able to discern that I gotta pour into myself the word of God. I gotta pray. I gotta get rid of hood people in my life who keep pulling me down. I got to get rid of self-righteous people in my life. We call that waste. You got to get rid of the attitude. You got to get rid of gossiping. You got to get rid of lusting after things that God never told you to love. I can't get no help in this house. Tell somebody it's time to take the diaper off. No, look at somebody else and say it's time to take the diapers off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 I, I, I don't mind coming and having a one-on-one with you, but, but, but after one-on-one becomes 10 and you're still where you were, we ain't meet no more. You know why? Because you don't value this word. This word is life-giving and it is ch life-changing. It will convict you. It will bring you to a new place in God where you grow with him and you can say no faster than you've ever wanted to say yes. You no longer deserve my time. Because I only said yes to this meeting because you needed to grow. But maybe sometimes, maybe it is time for some of you to stop going on coffee dates and tea dates with people who want to stay where they want to be. Because maybe now, just maybe now, you're getting in the way of God. Including your wife, including your husband. It's quiet in the house. Let me bring it up. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through 2. Here's what it says. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight, somebody say delight. His delight is in the law. Oh, my goodness, something in my spirit. Just, even just reading it, I can't help but... And in his law, he meditates how often? Yes. See, that word law means word and commandments. It means word, say word, word. and commandments. Yes. See, my, my habitual practice of loving God's word is when I mature in God and I say, God, I'm going to read this even though I don't want to read it. I'm going to pray even though I don't want to pray. I'm going to fast even though I don't want to fast. And watch this through habitually reading God's word day and night 
the word starts to take root. Let me put it this way. The word starts to work. You can't visit it. You got to live in it. I got to say it again. You can't visit the word. You got to live in it. Some things will not take root in your life until it moves from your conscience to your subconscious. This is where most of us get hung up. We can say, I love you, God, but your dreams reveal you might be struggling with God. See, what you do when you are awake is not what matters. It's what your brain tells you when you sleep that you should pay attention to. I'm helping some people right now. Because Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12 says this, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than what? Any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitude. What? See, if you're, you know, you know the word's working and you know you're growing up. So, hey, hey, tap somebody and say, grow up. Gr grow up. See, this is what usually happens when conviction sits in the room. We start to like daze out. Stay with me. See, you, you know... <laughs> Don't laugh, you, you made me look over that day, I'm like, wake up. You know that you're growing up in God when you're sleeping, but your heart is still saying, I love you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. You, you, know, you, you know you're there when, when the word is in your head. You, you, know, you ever had a, a song get stuck in your head and you wake up to the song? What would happen if we read the word so much that we woke up to the word? Ooh, come on, the word is life-giving. The word changes stuff. See, it, it's when you daydreaming, but your thoughts are so consumed with God that only thing you think about is pure thoughts and thoughts that are on high. The Bible says to think on things that are above, think on things that are pure, right? See, it's, it's when you can be around an attractive woman or a man, but your intrusive thoughts don't betray you. Can you be around a man who looks good and not be taking his clothes off at the same time? Can you be around a woman, fellas, and respect her so much that you can look in her eyes and, and not anywhere else and respect and honor her? Because after all, that's your sister and that's your brother in Christ. Mm -hmm. Because day and night, night and day, I've habitually decided to take in your word so much that now your word is working with me. Your word is working on me and your word is working through me. This is what I want for the entire room. I want everybody in this room to get to the point where the word is so rooted deep in you that no matter what people say to you, not even what you say to yourself can penetrate the word of God. Because when truth gets rooted in you, ooh, it's hard to remove truth. It don't even matter what you say to yourself. It's difficult to remove truth when, when truth has hit your heart. My prayer today is that not only would we grow up, we would grow up in pursuing love. Next week, I'm going to be dealing with some soul ties. It's not the weekend to miss. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, okay? B before I can make it pretty, we got to deal with the stuff. Next week, I'm going to walk you through some of the soul ties that have been holding you from growing up. Because some of you are married, but you're still married. But that's next week. <laughs> On episode two. <laughs> hey, let me give you the revelation when you put the word in, what happens. Psalms 1-3. It says, he is like a tree planted by streams of what? Water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither and all that he does, he what? God wants every single person in this room to prosper. If you are ready to prosper, stand on your feet with me all over the room.
Wow, family, what an amazing word. Listen, some of you may be feeling a tug or pulling at your heart to give your life to Jesus. Today is the day. If you're ready to make that commitment, then let's pray this prayer together. Jesus, I recognize that I am a sinner in need of a savior. I thank you that you died and rose again for me to be set free and saved. Today, I choose to follow you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you just prayed that prayer with us, congratulations. Today is the best day of your life, and we celebrate with you. If you prayed that prayer, listen, grab your phone and text I'm ready to 94,000 so that we can connect with you. We don't want you to walk this journey alone, so someone from our team is going to connect with you and help you through this process. Thank you so much for joining us and watching us. We'll see you next week.